laughter works for me at any point in time. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy laughing, and uh, I uh, I recommend it. I think that uh, I think that that's a big problem is that everybody is so serious, and that it lends to a lot of egotism, and it hinders science because uh, ego is really the biggest barrier to. We would have had all this down a long time ago if it wasn't for everybody worrying about uh, protecting their their ego and their kind of uh, intellectual property or whatever. So uh, yeah, I'm trying to do this with humor and uh, and to yeah make it more free. Let me take hers. Uh, you know, I've been studying this a lot from the uh, ancient tradition, and we know that we our decimal system comes from the Indian tradition. And I would suggest that the eighth branch uh, limb tree of yoga and the eightfold way of Buddhism is the uh, method for interpretation of these principles in a way that you take it in a really different direction as far as to be able to adapt it to uh, technology. But we have the technology internally. We have this fractal pattern, which is, you know, the chakra sure. system. And it's in Buddhism. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, the, and this is big in Tibetan Buddhism, which I know is huge in this area, and um, I used to be uh, friends with the, what's the famous professor here, because I studied with his students. What's his name? Not Hopkins, but, and maybe it is Hopkins. Yeah, you're right, it is Hopkins. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really nice guy. Um, anyway, you see it in there, it's the Red Buddha, um, and his name is Amitabha, and uh, sometimes in Chinese they call it Amitoko, but uh, the Sanskrit is Amitabha, it's the same word, it means uh, infinite light, um, and, uh, and that color red is associated uh, as well in the, in the Baha'i scriptures, so it's, the, yeah, it's, it's all, you know, the ancients either were carrying some trace of this, or they understood it but couldn't fully communicate it, I, or it was lost. I don't know what the whole deal was. But come up with the decimal system based on, on the geometrical patterns that they were yeah. seeing. But my question is to you, are you familiar with our uh, passed away Walter, <coughs> Walter Russell, our local... Uh, sure, yeah. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm familiar with Russell's work. Uh, I, I wouldn't consider myself an expert on everything he's done. I know that he did a periodic table that uh, correlates a lot with this, and uh, there's been some other people on the project who've done uh, more synthesis with his work, and I'm very interested in it, and I would like to pursue it more, but, um, um, you know, we're all working on the same principles, you know, so when I read his work, I see the similarity but I, I, I don't know that I um, have a detailed answer to that question. Um, One more, I'm talking about Walter, who's doing a lot of work between the, uh, this doubling octave progression um, and DNA <coughs> 64 uh, uh, the, um, building block, four, four basic building blocks leading to 64 possible combinations. Yeah. Well, the 64 is a huge thing. I mean, I, I kind of just graze past it when you get back. But the 64 is like pass and go. You want you 4, 8, 16, 32. 64 is when you get back to 1. And I've heard that uh, in some of the research and, you know, in cell growth, they say that the cells grow, they stay clumped together until they reach 64. At 64, they separate and they become then brain cells, heart cells, kidney cells, whatever. And so it's actually at the node of 64 that they become one. Each of them becomes one. And it demonstrates the unity of those numbers. Does that make sense? So 64 is prevalent in everything. It's uh, you know, cycles in the Mayan calendar. It's uh, the number of squares on the chessboard. It's the number of codons in the DNA. Um, Eaching, you know. Um, it, yeah, it's very, very commonly uh, observed aspect. How they came up with it way back then, I have no idea. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll get you, and then you, and then you. And then maybe we can kind of, we should wrap up a little bit after that. Yeah, um, I have you, like, uh, been, like, communicating with a lot of people who worked in other aspects of fractals and stuff like that, because I know there's been, like, a lot of work, and a lot of popularization about that, especially with uh, James Dee's work and everything. 
Yeah, the chaos. Yeah, theory, right. yeah. yeah. Well, there, I mean, you know, he found amongst these crazy chaotic patterns that if you spread them over time, that they were doubling, you know? And that was one of the first insights into chaos theory. And actually, if you look at one of Mandelbrot's original fractals, it's called a something cube, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, it's based on nine squares. He, he builds on his fractals using nine, uh, nine as the base. Um, yeah, I mean, Mandelbrot's book came out 10 years after Marco had discovered the equation. He, I remember he told me that, uh, and that book on fractals won more awards than any book in mathematical history. And, uh, and uh, you know, fractals, if you don't know, are, you know, self-generating, how would you call it, self-organizing systems, and they, they exist all throughout nature. Um, in fact, like the military uses a technology for identifying uh, like enemy bases and things.